This video was made possible by Squarespace. Hey guys, welcome to Amateur Chemistry. So today I decided to show you how you can easily make some really beautiful and big crystals at home without any special equipment and just a little bit of patience. The material that these crystals are made out of is called potassium alum, or in a more chemical term, potassium aluminum sulfate dodecahydrate. It is completely non-toxic, very easy to work with and grow, so it really is the perfect material for making big and clear crystals without much experience in crystal growing. Potassium alum is also very useful not only for crystal growing, but it can be used to purify water, tan leather and as a good deodorant. It can actually be brought from some supermarkets to be used in cooking, but in my country this is rather rare, so today I decided to make it myself. Like every chemical, it can be easily made if you already have some more chemicals, but for many people who just want to enjoy making some nice crystals and don't spend most of their time hoarding random chemicals in their garage, this method is rather inaccessible. That's why I wanted to develop a way of making potassium alum, which would not only be much more accessible, but also give substantial quantities of it, and after some research, I think I found one. Ok, so to make the alum, I am going to need two ingredients, which are potassium sulfate and aluminum sulfate. Both of them can surprisingly be made from some very basic materials, and I decided to first focus on potassium sulfate. I already knew that I could easily get the sulfate part from sulfuric acid, which I extracted from a car battery in a previous video, but when it comes to the potassium, I wasn't so sure about how to get it. Fortunately, I remembered the process I used in my wood to nitric acid video, where I extracted some potassium salts from wood to later turn them into nitric acid, and then I wasn't really interested in the potassium, but now it's a whole different story. However, before I delve deeper into this topic, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website platform made to allow entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace allows you to easily create a beautiful website and use it for selling pretty much everything or engaging with your audience. Squarespace offers amazing features like their powerful Fluid Engine which provides you with the best in-class website templates and allows you to really unleash your creativity in website development, which I myself tested and really enjoyed. Squarespace also provides you with the ability to connect dozens of third-party extensions to your site, as well as use their powerful blogging tools that allow you to easily share everything from stories to videos to your site, which in my opinion is just awesome. For a free trial, check out squarespace.com, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash amateurchemistry to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Anyway, to make the potassium sulfate, I first have to turn wood into something called potash, which is a crystalline material obtained by leaching ash with water, mainly composed of various potassium salts, which will be my gateway to make the alum. To start, I of course have to burn some wood, and I will be doing that in my trusty home fireplace. Also, after so many people told me that I can't split wood in the nitric acid video, I decided to improve on that and actually watch a tutorial, so I hope that now I am doing it better. Ok, so now with the wood ready, I lit the fireplace using some better technique this time and not trying to brute force it with gasoline, and after everything burned down, I was left with some nice and fresh ash. I am however going to need much more than this, so over the course of a few months, I continued to use the fireplace to obtain more ash, and when I felt that I had enough, I collected it all into these two creating containers. I have no idea why I chose them, much like in the nitric acid video, but if you think about it, ash is kind of like creating for plants, so I guess that justifies everything. Anyway, before starting to extract the potash, I had to get rid of these random pieces of charcoal in the ash, so I quickly got everything through a sieve, leaving me with this nice mountain consisting of 658 grams of pure analytical grade ash. Now to get the potash out of it, I wanted to improve and use a little bit different method than the last time, so I first turned my sieve into an extra large filter using this comically huge sheet of filtration paper that I possess for some reason and taped this contraption to a large bowl. I then filled it with all the ash and poured in some boiling water to leach away all of the potash, which will go through the filter paper as a solution, leaving behind all the insoluble junk. I also used these handy office clips to hold everything in place because the tape wasn't doing a very good job and when everything came through, I got the solution into a beaker and washed the ash down with another portion of hot water. In the end, I was left with a full beaker of some ash tea 
and now before proceeding I wanted to clean it up a little, so I quickly filtered it through some cotton, I also washed the leftover charcoal with water to get as much of the potash as I could and filtered this solution as well. I did made it so that I have two somewhat evenly filled beakers of this stuff and now I have to boil it down to concentrate the potash. After a few hours about half of the water evaporated, so I got everything into a single beaker and continued boiling it down. Now to make the potassium sulfate, I will have to acidify this solution with some sulfuric acid. It now contains a lot of various potassium salts such as the carbonate or chloride which should all convert into the sulfate under sulfuric acid, but before starting I have to tell you that sulfuric acid is very dangerous and this reaction can't be carried out without proper safety gear in place. Also, its progress will be nicely indicated by the pH of the mixture, because currently it is strongly basic, and when I bring it to about 2 using sulfuric acid, it will mean that it's finished. Ok, so to begin I started to slowly add the acid in dropwise to not make things heat up too much, and after a while I started to see some carbon dioxide gas evolving from this mixture, which was a good sign of progress. At one point everything turned cloudy for some reason and then reverted back to being clear which was rather weird. When no more carbon dioxide was being produced I checked the pH and it was around 3 which was ok and meant that this solution now mainly consists of potassium sulfate along with some trace impurities. Before proceeding further I have to tell you about an online chemistry supply store that provides me with many chemicals, BM Chemistry. BM Chemistry sells a lot of various reagents, laboratory equipment and many other things and there is a link to their page in the description. Anyway, to get the sulfate out of the solution I first filtered off some random brown precipitate that appeared and then boiled everything down which took forever and left me with this partially crystallized mess. To purify it I first dissolved it in a minimal amount of distilled water, filtered it through some cotton and then got it into a fridge to cool, which lowered the potassium sulfate solubility, making it crystallize out leaving the impurities still in solution. To get rid of them I vacuum filtered the crystals out and before purifying them further I recovered some more by boiling the filter down, putting it into a fridge and again vacuum filtering. I then combined all of the crystals and washed them with some anhydrous ethanol, which doesn't dissolve the sulfate but gets rid of some of the colored impurities. When that was done I dried the crystals on a hot plate, leaving me with 38.4 grams of some rather pure potassium sulfate made from wood and battery acid. It of course isn't completely pure as you can probably guess by it having this awful yellow color, but it should work alright for making the alum. And speaking of that, now with the potassium sulfate ready, it is time to take care of the aluminum one. Making it is a bit tricky, but similarly to the potassium sulfate, it doesn't require any weird reagents and all that I'm going to need is some aluminum foil and my trusty sulfuric acid. To start I got some aluminum foil that I used to wrap my sandwich with earlier and got it onto a scale. I then topped off the weight to 20 grams using some more fresh foil and to start dissolving it, I paired around 30 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid into a beaker and added a bit of the foil. Initially nothing happened, but when I added some water, a very vigorous reaction started to occur, in which the sulfuric acid reacted with the aluminum to form aluminum sulfate and hydrogen gas, which is very flammable and without proper ventilation can become an explosion hazard. This reaction also requires water to work, because aluminum sulfate has an incredibly great affinity for it, often crystallizing as an octadecahydrate, meaning that for a single molecule of the sulfate, there are a whopping 18 molecules of water. Anyway, the reaction ended up being so hard to control that I got everything into an ice bath to cool it down and prevent a disaster. I also kept adding more aluminum foil and water, which made me realize that this beaker was way too small for this, so I got everything into a larger one. When I added all of the foil, I left this thing to react for the night, and when I came back it all turned into this weird brown brick of hydrated aluminum sulfate and unreacted aluminum foil. To start processing this thing I added some distilled water and heated up everything on a hot plate to dissolve it. Now to remove the undissolved foil along with this weird brown impurity, I passed this solution twice through a double layer of coffee filters which took forever. After all this it still didn't look too great so I passed it through a tightly packed piece of cotton which did the job much better but took 5 hours. In the meantime I picked out most of the unreacted aluminum foil from the filter and dried it to see how much got dissolved, which gave me a rough idea of how much aluminum sulfate I had made. Anyway, I boiled the now clean solution down a little to reduce its volume, and when I left it overnight it had all solidified into this rather pretty crystal brick. Now with everything ready, I can finally make the alum, and to do that I will just have to combine both sulfates together in a specific ratio. 
To start, I suspended all of my potassium sulfate in some distilled water and reheated the aluminum sulfate to make it go back into solution. I then added 190 ml of this solution into the potassium sulfate, which is actually wrong, and I should have added double that amount, but because I screwed up some of the math, my final amount of alum is only half of what it could have been. Anyway, to finish making the alum, I heated this mixture up to get the potassium sulfate into solution and then filtered everything through some cotton to get rid of this random cloudiness. I then got the alum solution into a fridge to crystallize some of it out. When I came back the next morning, a large bed of crystals appeared in the beaker, meaning that I actually successfully made the alum which made me really happy. Just by themselves, the crystals looked gorgeous and weighed a whopping 124.8 grams. I mean, these crude crystals were just amazing and I actually could call it a day here, but I wanted to turn them into a big, high quality crystal. To do that, I first had to prepare a crystal growing solution and to start, I dissolved a total of 140 grams of the alum in about 900 milliliters of hot distilled water, which made a lightly oversaturated solution. When everything had dissolved, I filtered the solution to get rid of any contaminants and left it to cool down to room temperature. I then sprinkled in a tiny amount of crushed alum and left it for two days. This makes the excess alum crystallize out, making the solution become perfectly saturated, which is important for growing good quality crystals. Anyway, after two days, I drained the solution into a different beaker and recovered the newly made crystals which looked incredibly nice by themselves and to grow a big one I picked a single nice looking crystal to use as a seed and tied it to a fishing line which I secured in the solution using a small stick. The idea here is that the saturated solution will very slowly evaporate, depositing the alum on the seed crystal making it grow. It is also important that the room temperature is constant during this step and the solution isn't disturbed and if you take care of all that, now you just have to wait. A lot. I unfortunately didn't have time to wait for a few months, which in this case would be ideal, so I got a box with some holes into the beaker to prevent dust from entering and set up a fan nearby, which would blow air onto the sphinx, speeding up the process. I then left this contraption to run for about two weeks, and it proved to be rather effective, and the downside it made a lot of unwanted crystals appear, but it definitely sped up the growth of the main one, and when I was happy with how it looked, I took it out and oh man was it beautiful. It's rather chunky and almost perfectly clear, with some cracks in the middle which are probably there because of my impatience, and now it normally would be time to free it from the fishing line and paint it with some clear nail polish to preserve it for a long time, but I actually want to grow it even larger, and I plan to update you guys in a few months in the form of a community post. Anyway, I think that this project has been one of the best on my channel so far, because everything worked out really nicely, and just how freaking cool is that you can turn wood, battery acid and aluminum foil into some beautiful crystals without using any exotic equipment. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video, if you did, you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel, you can also check out my Patreon where I post some extra content, and as always, I want to give a big thanks to all my amazing patrons for their support and making projects like this possible, and see you guys in the next video.